All right, Rebel EM followers, so a new paper just got published looking at subdissociative ketamine in the IV formulation, comparing it to the nebulized formulation in the treatment of acute pain in the emergency department. Now, it seems like every month there's some new formulation of ketamine in the subdissociative dosing range that we give. And here's just a quick summary slide of those. In the IV formulation, we do anywhere from 0.1 to 0.3 milligrams per kilogram. In the intramuscular range, it's 0.5 to 1 milligram per kilogram. In the intranasal formulation, it's 0.5 to 1 milligram per kilogram. And now we're going to be talking about the nebulized formulation, anywhere from 0.75 up to 1.5 milligrams per kilogram. And this is the paper we're going to be talking about. Published in Annals of Emergency Medicine 2024, I have it article in press in parentheses still because it hasn't been fully reviewed to be published with a PubMed ID number, but it is showing up on papers that are about to be published on Annals of Emergency Medicine. And this is comparison of nebulized ketamine to intravenous subdissociative dose ketamine for treating acute painful conditions in the emergency department a prospective, randomized, double-blind, double-dummy controlled trial. That is quite the mouthful. And what they basically are trying to answer in this study is, which ketamine regimen is superior for treating moderate to severe acute pain in the emergency department? Nebulized, which they call K-ban, at 0.75 milligrams per kilogram, or IV subdissociative ketamine, IVK, at 0.3 milligrams per kilogram. Now this was a single center randomized clinical trial. This is by Sergei Modov and his colleagues who've done tons of ketamine research. These are adult patients in the emergency department and on a scale of zero to 10, they had to have at least a pain scale score of five or greater. And if you met these requirements, then you got randomized to one of two arms. The IV arm was 0.3 milligrams per kilogram of IV ketamine in 100 mLs of NS run over 15 minutes. And then you also received a placebo of 5 mLs of NS that was given in a nebulized form over 5 to 15 minutes. The other group, the nebulized group, the K-band group, got 0.75 milligrams per kilogram of ketamine given over 5 to 15 minutes but also received a placebo of IV 100 mLs of NS given over 15 minutes. So this way they tried to keep blinding so you didn't know which thing you were getting, either the nebulized ketamine or the IV ketamine. Now their primary outcome was pain scores at 30 minutes, and then they had some other secondary outcomes, including need for rescue analgesia, adverse events, and then pain scores at 15, 30, 60, 90, and 120 minutes. It was 150 patients, so 75 in each group. The baseline pain was exactly the same in both groups, was 8.2 on that scale of 0 to 10. And it was almost a 50-50 mix of men and women. The most common complaints were abdominal pain at 46%. Musculoskeletal pain, both traumatic and non-traumatic, at 26%, and flank pain at about 22%. Now, when we compare the two groups, when we look at the primary outcome, pain at 30 minutes, the nebulized ketamine decreased pain from 8.2 to 3.8. The IV subdissociative ketamine decreased it from 8.2 to 3.6. This was not statistically different. They were looking for a difference of at least 1.3 between the groups, and they didn't achieve that. Also, just to be complete, when they followed this out to the 60 and 120 minute time frame, there was still no difference. It was basically they equally reduced pain in both groups all the way out to 120 minutes. Now, some things that are worth mentioning here. More patients in the nebulized ketamine group required rescue pain meds, 21 patients compared to 10 patients in the IV ketamine group. But the people in the IV ketamine group had more feelings of sedation and feelings of unreality when compared to the nebulized ketamine. So what do we do with this study? Well, both the nebulized K-band 
and the IV subdissociative ketamine equally decreased pain. And it was about on the order of dropping by 4.5 at about 30 minutes, all the way to 5 by about the 120 minutes when we start from baseline to the time the med was given, all the way out to that full duration of time. What was not balanced between the groups is the nebulized ketamine required more rescue analgesia. And I don't know what the reason for this is, because there have been dosing studies that have looked at 0.75, 1, and 1.5 mg per kg of nebulized ketamine, which we've reviewed on Rebel EM before. Now, it could be that they didn't standardize the nebulization time in all the patients. So you could have gotten 5 minutes of nebulized ketamine, you could have gotten 15 minutes, or you could have gotten 10 minutes. And by not standardizing this, maybe these patients didn't get the full dose of ketamine in the little vial in the nebulizing uh, canister. Now, the authors didn't measure how much was left in these canisters, but might be one of the reasons why we see the need for more rescue analgesia. Now, the IV ketamine group, although didn't require as much rescue analgesia, had more feelings of unreality and sedation compared to the nebulized group. And I'm going to tell you what my thoughts are on how to fix both of these events in these two medications. For the nebulized group, it's just Give the full 15 minutes. Don't do five minutes. Don't do 10 minutes. Don't do eight minutes. Just do the full 15. And I've talked about how to reduce those feelings of unreality in the IV ketamine group. You either decrease the dose and give 0.15 mg per kg over 15 minutes, or you increase the duration. So you give the 0.3 mg per kg and you give that over 30 minutes to reduce those feelings of unreality. So what's the bottom line? Well, it looks like neither one is superior to the other in terms of effectiveness, and they both actually equally reduced pain, at least short term. Now, if you're not standardizing how you're giving your nebulized ketamine, your patients may require more rescue analgesia. The flip side of that is, is that if you give too aggressive of a dose of subdissociative ketamine over a shortened duration of time, your patients may have more feelings of unreality and may not be happy to get this the next time you recommend it. So there you go. Let me know your thoughts, comments, and questions.